Hello everyone and welcome back to Columbia Physics Preceptor TV. Today we're going to be discussing experiment 1.4. Uh, it's the first optics experiment, the first one out of three. A very convenient way of thinking of light is in terms of light rays. It's just, think of it, right, uh, light is traveling along a straight line until it you know, bounces into something. It can bounce off or it can bend as it goes through different materials, but between bending and bouncing off things, it's just basically just a straight line. The first thing we're going to discuss today is reflection. If you have some type of mirror and you send a light ray towards it, it's going to bounce off. So you can define this um, a normal to this, this um, mirror as being a line that's exactly perpendicular to it. Then you can also define the incident angle I and the reflected angle R. And although it looks like they're very different here, the law of reflection states that in fact I is equal to R. This is one of the things you're going to verify today. You're going to do pretty much this exact experiment and you're going to measure I and R to uh, determine that they're equal to each other. Another thing that you're going to be dealing with today is uh, images. And in fact, there are two types of images. There are real images and virtual images. A real image is something that you can capture on film or capture on a piece of paper or something. For example, if you're looking at something, the, f the light rays are going through your eye and they're you know, bending and, and, uh, and stuff in your eye to uh, be caught on the back of your eye. The object that you're looking at is in fact being captured on the back of your eye and so uh, this is actually a real image. It's something that can be captured. On the other hand, if you have for example a mirror again and you have an object and you put your eye over here, the light ray reflects off the mirror into your eye. It looks to your eye as though this object is actually on the other side of the mirror. However, if you go there and you put a film, there's no way you're going to actually capture an, an image of this object. It's in fact a virtual image. It's not something you can capture. So those two different types of images are going to be occurring. Uh, not just today, but in general for the next three optics experiments. The third thing that I'd like to speak about is refraction. Light travels at a constant speed c, which is about 300,000 kilometers per second, in vacuum, and almost just as fast in air. However, if you start sending light through, for example, water or glass, it seems as though light travels slower. In fact, the reason is that glass and light, they have a bunch of molecules and atoms and stuff in it, so light can't just travel along a straight path. It has to kind of bounce around in there. So even though it actually travels at the speed of light in between each of these, effectively it travels much slower because it has to go, it can't go in a straight line, it has to go some weird, um, on some weird path. So in some other object or material, it might travel at v, speed v, which is smaller than the speed of light c. Now you can then define the index of refraction n to be the, the original speed of light c divided by the effective speed v. So, for example, for vacuum, n would just be 1, c divided by c, and for air, n would be almost 1. It would be slightly less than 1, or slightly larger than 1, but almost 1. However, for materials like water or glass, n can be significantly larger than 1. For example, n of water is about equal to 1.33. And this is another thing you're going to be measuring today. Now, the, the reason for this, uh, to, uh, or one of the consequences, rather, of this is refraction. Suppose that you're a lifeguard and you're standing on the beach and there's someone in the water that needs your help. Of course, you're much faster at running than you are at swimming, everyone is. So if you're standing all the way over here and you have to help the victim, you wouldn't travel along the shortest distance. That would be kind of silly because you're swim, swim so much slower than you run. A smarter way to go would be to run a little farther down the beach and then cut in. You wouldn't cut exactly this, um, this wouldn't be 90 degrees, it would be some other angle. So you see, the shortest distance may be along the straight line, but the least amount of time it would take you to get over here would be along some bent line. And this is exactly how, how uh, light works. Light doesn't want to travel along the shortest distance, it wants to travel the least amount of time. So if you have a light ray that's coming in from, instead of beach to water, let's have, suppose it's coming in in air, and it encounters some water. Then it's going to bend a little bit 
towards this normal, just like you would if you were this uh, lifeguard. And there, this angle, the incident angle and the refracted angle are prime, there's an exact uh, correlation between these two angles. That, of course, depends on these two materials. And in fact, it doesn't just depend on the materials, it depends on the indices of refraction. So let's suppose instead of air and water, let's suppose we have some material with an index of refraction N1 and some um, index of refraction N2 down here. Call this theta 2 and call this theta 1. Then Snell's law tells us that N1 times sine of theta 1 is exactly equal to N2 times sine of theta 2. So that quantifies exactly which, uh, what these angles are. So suppose you know that one is air and the other one's water, and you measure one of the angles, you can find the other. Or suppose you measure two of the angles, you know one of the indices of refraction, then you can find the other index of refraction. That's the way you're going to be using it today. If you look at this formula here, uh, you see that, or actually if you look at this situation here, if instead of going from water to, or from air to water, if you went from water to air, as you start cranking up this angle theta 2 here, you see that theta 1 gets larger and larger. And so at some point here, for some critical angle, this theta 1 is going to be 90 degrees. It's going to go straight along the edge. Then as you make this angle larger, there's no extra room for this theta 1 to grow. And hence, there is no refraction. There's only internal reflection. Because when you send this ray in, some of it's refracted normally and some of it's reflected. But as this, at this, after this critical angle, you can't refract at all. All of it has to be reflected. This is called total internal reflection. So in this case, uh, since N2 was larger than N1, uh, th theta critical, in this case you have N1 sine of 90 degrees, which is the angle theta 1 when this, when this angle is theta critical, has to be equal to N2 sine of theta critical. Now, sine of, of 90 degrees is just 1, so from here we can see that the critical angle, let's call this theta C, has to be equal to the inverse sine of N1 over N2. This could not occur the other way around because as we make this theta 1 larger and larger, there's no point where this would go off the charts. So you can only have internal reflection from a, from a material with larger index of refraction to one with smaller, not the other way around. That's why you know, fiber optics are made from glass fiber, stuff like that, and not from something with lower index of refraction. So let's talk about the actual experiment. The first one is in regards to images, or rather with respect to um, reflection. The second one is, with, uh, is in regards with, uh, to um, uh, images. So this is some mirror. You're going to put down two pins on one side. It's called a pin A and pin B prime, or B. These define a light ray. So if you put your eye over here somewhere, you're going to be able to see the reflections of these. A is going to look like it's over here. Let's call it A prime to signify that it's not actually a pin, but in fact an image, a virtual image. And B is going to appear as though it's over here. Again, B prime. Then you're going to pop down two more pins here that seem to align with this, these two virtual images. Let's call them C and D. Then once you take this stuff away, you can actually draw a line that goes through B and A into the mirror and through C and D. And by knowing exactly where the mirror was, you can define the normal and hence find the incident and reflected angle. And you should find that the incident and reflected angle are in fact equal. The second part of the experiment is, um, has to do with virtual images. It looks pretty much like the same setup, but instead of having two pins over here, you're going to have one pin. Of course, this is going to have some virtual image on the other side, and you're going to try to find the location of this virtual image, and you're going to do it in two ways. The first one, let's say you put your eye over here, you're going to try to actually put down a pin, reach over the mirror, and try to figure out if you can find, if you can put the pin in the loca location of the virtual image. All you can see, of course, is that the virtual image is somewhere along this line. So let's say you pretend, you, you suppose that the virtual image is over here, so you put down the pin over here. Of course, you've not right reached the correct location. How would you know? Because they're both on the same line. Well, as you move your eye left or right, you see that these, in fact, are not equal because of parallax. And, and by doing so, you can modify the location of your pin until it's in exactly on top of the image, which will occur when there's no parallax. So by doing that, you'll find exactly where the image is. 
plus minus some uncertainty. The second way of doing it uh, is actually has to do with ref uh, reflected rays. So you're going to put your eye somewhere over here, and you're going to find exactly where this reflected ray hits your eyes. So you're going to put down a couple of pins along that ray, and then you're going to move your eye to some other location. So you're going to get some other reflected ray. You're going to put down two more pins along that one. So now you have two reflected rays, one here and one here, and what you're going to do is you're going to extend them behind the mirror and look where they intersect. And if you're done it accurately enough, they will intersect right on top of the image, and that's another way to find the image of the, or the, the location of the virtual image. The third part, of the, or next part of the experiment, um, is more qualitatively qualitative. It uh, has to do with multiple reflections. You should put two mirrors at a 90 degree angle to each other, and place write your name on a piece of paper. And by looking at this, these mirrors, you'll see a few different reflections. A couple of them will be reversed, just like you'd expect from a mirror, but one of them, because of multiple reflections in here, will actually end up being correct. You'll be able to read your name without reflecting it. Then you can put these mirrors, instead of a 90 degree angle to each other, you can put them face to face like this and put a single pin in between, and you'll see an infinite array of pins. Well, it won't be infinite because they'll die, the reflections will die out after a while. So you'll only see not quite an infinite, but fairly many. The next part of the experiment is to verify Snell's law, or not actually to verify Snell's law, but to measure the index of refraction of water. You'll do that by having a semicircular um, container filled with water. You're going to place a pin in the exact center of the circle here, and another pin somewhere else. Now these two pins together define a, um, a ray of light, so you'll be able to measure what this incident angle is over here. And because this is from air to water, it's going to refract at some other angle called R prime, and it's going to go through this water and out, out through the container so that you can see it out here. You're going to place another pin here so that it looks like these three pins all align. Of course, they don't align if you look from above, but it's going to seem, because the light is refracted, it's going to seem like all three of them align. You're going to do this for five different locations of the initial pin so that you get five different data points. And then you're going to graph sine i versus sine of r prime. And from this graph, you should be able to determine what the index of refraction of water is. I'd like you to think about also why you make this, this uh, container semicircular. Why it's not square or rectangular or triangular or something else. Why is it semicircular? Uh, the next part of the experiment, and the final part, is determine the index of refraction of lucite. You have a block, it's a plexiglass, with a little bit of a line on the bottom. So if you draw it out like this, it's going to have some line across it on the bottom. Now, of course, when you look straight from above, you're just going to see the line where it is. But as you move your, your, your head, you're going to start noticing that what you're seeing is, in fact, being refracted. So let's say you have a light ray that goes up along these directions. They're going to be refracted out at some different angle. So you're going to see it, um, so you're not going to see it on top here. You're going to see it at some uh, other angle, some other location here. As you move your eye farther and farther down, this final angle will have to go to not, the uh, refracted angle would have to go to 90 degrees. In doing so, you basically have total, almost total internal reflection. You've basically found the critical angle. This then has to be the critical angle since this is 90 degrees. And by measuring the location of the line where it appears to be on the top, you can measure what the critical angle is. And from the formula I wrote before, and by knowing that the index of refraction of air is 1, you'll be able to determine the index of refraction of lucite. That's everything, and good luck.